Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Today, we're going to talk about housing affordability. Everybody's waiting for home prices to come down or for us to get a break in the interest rates, but either or, right now, homes are out of reach for a lot of people. So we're going to take a look on a national scale and show you right here that this is an affordability index from the Federal Reserve. And it basically says the value of 100 means that a family with a median income has exactly enough income to qualify for a mortgage on a medium priced home. An index above 100 signifies the family earning the median income has more than enough income to qualify for a mortgage. You can see here in November 2021, our index got up to 142.7 nationally. Why is that? Rates were so low that affordability was great. Home prices had already had a big run up in 2020, and they were starting to go up pretty aggressively in 2021. But for the first of the year, Homes were quite affordable, and that's why so many buyers were out there at the volume that they were. Money was free. Now we're sitting down here nationally at 91.2. So that's a big fall from 140, 142 to 91. So 91 is below where, where obviously where 100 means that, you know, 100% of people make, you know, gain the median income and afford a home. Now it's only 91. So it's tough out there. And so we're going to need home prices to come down and we're going to need interest rates to come down. And all eyes are on the next couple of months to see what happens. Here's where we stack out nationally. Now, I wish I had a chart that was more current than this. This one's only 2020. It's not 2022. I can't find one. Uh, but we're sitting here at 33% can afford the median home price. Surprisingly, California's 33 as well. I thought they'd be down in the teens. But you know who's in the teens? Vermont. Vermont. Sitting out there at 16%, only 16% can afford a home in Vermont. That was surprising to me. Is there a big standout here where a lot of people can afford a home? Let's see. There's uh, uh, Tennessee at 36%, 37% in Illinois, and 35% in Wisconsin. Illinois kind of surprises me with their, with their tax rate out there. Only 23% in Wyoming. So that's where we stack up nationally. Now, let's take a look at homeowners insurance rates. This one I find interesting. California, 1,166, and we are at 1,976 for the year. The southern states where you get a lot of hurricanes, obviously, their insurance rates are the highest. Florida coming at 34, Texas coming at 3,400. The tornado states, Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, 4,400 and 3,900, respectfully. So get back up to Vermont. They're 1,455. So they... And that's New Hampshire. Vermont is 12, 12. So Vermont's uh, lower than us. Only 16% can afford to buy a house out there. But when you can, your insurance rates are pretty good. Let's talk about automobile insurance. We are in the top 10 for automobile insurance, folks. Full coverage is average of $2,699. Minimum coverage, $980. Why is that? Well, Arizona is known for a couple things. One is rocks. Driving down the road, you get a rock flicked up by a car or a truck in front of you, hits your windshield, it cracks, you need a new windshield. The other one, hate to say it, car theft. We have a higher percentage of car theft here. And uh, the other thing is, if you've ever driven up the 101 <laughs> towards Scottsdale and you see how people drive down here, you understand why car insurance rates are so high. Now, List the price ratio right now. How are homes selling in Arizona right now? Well, not great, but you are getting 96.5% of you are getting your list price. But in order to do that, 48% of you are contributing towards closing costs. So you're going to have to give some things away to get your home sold. You're getting close to getting your list price, about 5% less, but you're still going to have to kick in some dollars. So whatever you list your home for, just come to terms with the fact that nobody's going to offer you that full price. Even if it's the bell of the ball, if it's the best price on the block, you're not going to get it. Um, unless you price it excruciatingly low, then you'll have a lot of interest and people are going to come in, take a look at it, and bid it up. Not at all like the levels of 2021. But then again, you know that. And one of the things that I'm seeing here is expired listings have had this huge spike this year versus Last year, we only had 461. Now we have 1,504. What's going on with canceled listings? See if that's uh, right here. Um, they're actually coming down. So that's an interesting 
thing there. You got more expired. In other words, the contract ran past its due date, said, okay, well, we're not going to relist it. Just let it expire. But people are giving up that way instead of canceling their listing. I'm, I'm out of here. So cancel listings have gone up since November, but they're starting to come down. A couple of quick looks at some things that are going on here as far as inventory. And you can see that in the last 30 days, they've started to come up. And right now on my seven-day moving average, I'm seeing that new listings are finally starting to spike up by about 400 to 500 units. And this needs to continue to get us into a market that is friendlier for buyers, that it that doesn't bode well for sellers if that continues. Although we're getting more new listings, the fact that we have more expires is what's keeping the active listing count so low. I mean, it doesn't do you any good to add 400 homes and take off 2,400. And that's what's happening. So now the expires, that'll stop. That happened because it was the end of the year. So it's going to wash out by the second week of January, which is coming. And so I expect that number to come back down, back down to normal. But I also expect new listings to continue to climb. So all of the Cromford market data and things that you've seen where they go, here we go. It looks like we're going to a seller's market. I'm far more skeptical based on the numbers I'm seeing. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to take a little more inventory, a lot more inventory before we see those numbers change. And uh, it's going to have to be right now, we're about 16,500 homes on the market. We're going to have to get to 20,000 again. Um, and that's going to be a buyer's market. So I don't see us getting lower than 16,000 in January and February. And I don't see the number of homes going under contract on a weekly basis getting in excess of 2,400. Now, if any time between now and the end of February, we see an interest rate of about 5.5%, sales are going to go up. They're not going to go crazy, but they're going to go up. And then we will see that sellers will have a better chance of moving their homes. For now, it was a fleeting moment in December, in my opinion, and it looks like inventory is creeping up for January. So do me a favor, smash that like button and come back often. Take care.